Hey guys, welcome back to DIY Guitar Making. I actually have a friend here. This is, if you're in the forums, this is LC Guitars. This is Robert Livingston. He took my class in, help me out here. 2018. 2018, March. yes. I was very happy to have him just come out and visit and he brought a guitar. This guitar is going to, well, give me that story first. Okay. I was contacted in June by a uh, potential customer, a lady who wanted to get a guitar for her son for his birthday. She contacted me in June. His birthday was in July. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but I had already started working on a guitar, mahogany back and sides. I'd already had the sides bent and I had the cutout done. Started off as a Venetian cutaway and it ended up cracking right through here. So at that point, you know, am I out $200 for a really nice set of mahogany back and sides, right. or do I find a way to fix it? So put on my thinking cap and decided to go with this cutaway with the uh, a piece of ebony there. Which looks cool as just like a little accent piece. I've, um, I've actually seen that intentionally done, although it actually here in the story, maybe in, in the other case where I've seen someone do something like this, maybe it was the same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a, a good way to, you know, save yourself. So the customer came down, saw the set of sides, was very happy with it. He brought his primary guitar down with him, which was a great help to me. Um, I was able to get what he liked about the guitar and what he didn't like about the mm -hmm. guitar and was able to add that into it. One of the things he specifically wanted was a little bit thinner body and then a little bit narrower nut. We went with the uh, inch and 11 sixteenths nut on it instead of the inch and three quarter. I measured the thickness of his neck at the 12th fret and at the first, first fret. So we were able to come across that. I let him play a few of my guitars that I had electric wise there in the shop. One of the acoustics, actually the acoustic that I built here. Uh, he played that, was really happy with that. Um, so made the plan, got the guitar to the point where I had the neck rough cut, slightly carved, but not completely carved. And I actually called him, he was only an hour away. I said, hey, come down, try it out. So he came down, we messed with the neck, I actually had him there, uh, showed him the process of carving the neck, and then got the neck where he was happy with it while he was in the shop, right. which was a great thing for me because you never know what a person's gonna like for a neck. So anyway, right. the neck is... And they might say they like one thing. So, so actually having some sort of prop for what they actually want, meaning, you know, you said he brought in a guitar, that's huge. Like yeah. I always have people tell me what they like, go, you know, go play something. We need to fit, we really need to zero in on the neck shape yeah. almost first. Cause mm -hmm. it's one of those things that as a player out there in the world, you might not think you care about that much, but you care more than you do. Because then if I built you a guitar where we didn't have that conversation, you might pick it up and be like, oh, I don't know something just feels like, you know, wimpy about this yeah. or, or too stout and in my way. So it's very important. So while we're talking about the neck, this is Torified Maple. I did a little research online and I had not seen anyone online post any photos with a Torified Maple neck on an acoustic guitar yet. So this, not saying it's the first, but the first one. it's <laughs> one of, it's gonna be one of the few that are out there at the time. Uh, but that is, uh, this neck is just, I just love the feel and the, the look of it. You can see the reflections and of it. Um, torified wood is great for stability. Mm -hmm. So it gives you, uh, uh, at least in theory, a more stable neck, which everybody wants because necks move. Yeah. So along with that, two carbon fiber rods and a truss rod, a nice hefty uh, two-way adjustable truss rod in it. Um, Very nice. One thing I've changed since taking your class is all of my truss rods are now top adjust. Mm. Just, as a repair person, yeah. it is so frustrating Get, getting, getting a wrench in there sometimes <laughs> to uh to adjust yeah. the neck a uh, satin finish a little bit dusty in here mm -hmm. now um, but a nice satin nitrocellulose finish on the uh, guitar mahogany this came from hern hardwood pennsylvania local supplier yeah. the top is sitka spruce um, and i know we're all talking about where we're getting things now because lmi not going to be there soon. Uh, this came from Alaska Specialties Wood. Uh, so they have really That's good great. stuff. This is, um, I believe, a 2A top that okay. I went with on this. Yeah, I've gotten some cedar from them yep. before. Yep. Uh, piece of Brazilian rosewood for the bridge, Brazilian rosewood for the head plate, and then East Indian rosewood on the uh, fretboard. 
gold fret wire from Stu Mac, and we did an ebony. Uh, so is door. that is that fretboard not considered Evo Gold? Because can do they it's, call it Evo Gold? It is not. It is fret wire. Stu Mac calls it gold fret wire. Evo okay. Gold is a trade name from Jeskar. Uh, so it is not Evo Gold, but it is. I wonder if it's still a copper alloy or if yeah. it's just something that's meant to look it you know what i mean i'm, yeah. I'm just curious yeah. what because we can't get jeskar fret wire anymore i don't know if people know that correct the company yeah, the is, evo gold the evo gold yes they still the, make nickel silver and they still make stainless oh okay so the company didn't go out of business yeah. they just stopped making evo gold. they could not find from what i've read they could not find a reliable source for the material anymore oh okay. so the company they were getting the raw material from okay was not supplying quality material any longer. The Stumac Gold, it I can see a little bit of a visible difference. It felt a tiny bit softer cutting. I know when you've, you've cut with the nippers, you can feel it and then it snaps. Yep, yep. This kind of cut through it's a little bit. It's very brittle. Yeah. The, the Evo Gold yeah. is very this brittle. This gold cut a little harder than nickel silver, but it didn't have that snap Pop. that you get yeah. whenever you do cut through it, so. Um, we'll see. Time will tell how it wears. Bone nut, bone saddle on it. And then as a little decoration, the uh, new owners plays a lot. So he's going to be using these lumen lay dots, which can't really get a great in the video, but they, in the dark, these things glow like crazy. So yep. they're, they're glow in the dark uh, side dots, yep. which is, is pretty cool, pretty unique. Onboard electronics or K and K pure mini pickup system. Uh, there's no volume or anything. This goes directly into a external preamp. So it kind of eliminates the need for a volume switch, adding any of that extra electronics into the guitar. Simple, easy, plug it in, go. Okay. And if Great. anything breaks on it, it's all external, the actual right. electronics of it. So what, why don't you talk about this a little bit? Cause this is really cool right the, here. The pick guard. Um, so I wanted to do something special. This is actually the very first acoustic guitar that I am selling to a customer. So this is kind of a big deal for me. I wanted to do something kind of special for him. And it's actually only the sixth acoustic guitar to come out of my shop. So I number them similar to how you do, whether it's me building it or a student building it, I add the numbers all together. Mm -hmm. So this is the sixth guitar out of the shop. And do you ever have your numbers uh, come out in the wrong order? Yeah, I have number three is hanging on the wall <laughs> with no frets on it right yeah. now. There, there <laughs> Four and go. five are done, yep. gone. Uh, uh, those were, I, I get questions about that endlessly. Like, oh, you just posted the video for guitar number 106. Why are you starting work on number 86 again? It's even worse with electric because I have three or four that ended up in the burn pile that were still serial numbered. Mm. So <laughs> right, right. a couple, couple carved through on the back of the necks, dress rod pops out the back. So anyway, I wanted to do something really special for him. He had a tortoise shell style pick guard on his guitar. I didn't want to put plastic on it. I know I have the plastic glow in the dark dots, but nobody can see those except for the player. Um, so I found a really nice piece of ebony that is actually matching from the piece in the cutaway. Um, it would have been about here on the, the board. I'm pretty new to CNC work. So I spent a little bit of time, actually a lot of time on Fusion 360 developing the actual program for it. So the pick guard itself is ebony, and then the initials, the customer's initials are done in this piece of cutoff material from the back. So it is the matching mahogany from the back. Oriented the grain differently because I kind of wanted to break it up a little bit. CNC'd out the letters on mahogany and then using a 20 thousandths bit actually machined the uh, relief cut where the inlay is going to go glued that in and then finished the pick guard with a couple nice coats of clear lacquer left this a little bit glossier than the rest of the body just to give it a little bit of a flare so he actually doesn't even know i did the pick guard yet so oh okay so cool, i cool. know he wanted a pick guard but he's not getting a plastic one he's getting a custom made one so yeah yeah, I love the ebony. I really do. I've thought about doing thin wood pick guards like that. You see stuff like that on arch top guitars. It's admittedly like a totally different thing. It's not glued directly down to the surface, but it really always irks me a little bit that you build this thing entirely out of very legitimate materials like solid wood, and then you just slap this piece of plastic on it at the end, and it just kind of kills the 
mojo of the instrument a little bit right at the last minute too. Mm -hmm. So I really like that. I like the look of it. Of course, the question everybody's going to ask is how does that affect the sound? 100% it did affect the sound. Whether it made it worse, I don't think it made it worse. It did quiet it just a hair, just a tiny bit. You're basically putting a almost a sixteenth of an inch. It's actually 1.2 millimeter thick. About the same thickness as what your bridge plate is on the inside is being glued onto the outside. So yes, it adds a little bit of weight to the top of the guitar and it adds a little bit of stiffness, but uh, still resonates really well, sustains well. I don't think it negatively impacted the sound and it definitely positively impacted the looks. Right, right. Like yeah. everything in guitar making, uh, you're always, it's this compromise between various things like the tone, the aesthetics, and I would also add to this to say something else about having this um, wood pick guard on here is that it affects the long-term viability of the instrument in a positive way in that when you put plastic pick guards on things because you're putting this you know, strange homogenous material called plastic onto a hygroscopic material called wood, the wood wants to move and it will move a little bit. And that plastic is this kind of firm, unyielding thing that you'll actually see on very old guitars splits. You definitely get checkering along the lacquer if you have lacquer, but you can even get splits in the top because that top is moving, but it has this firm piece of plastic stuck to it. So in a certain sense, I don't like the plastic also, even though I use it right now, also because it's kind of killing the hand-me-down generational aspect of the instrument. It has to be either dealt with in the future or just accepted as something that has you know degraded the top over time. But when you're doing wood on wood, at least in theory, you shouldn't get that. Mm, you might a little bit because it's a different, you know, different types of wood. The ebony, it shrinks at a different rate than the wood yeah. that it's glued to, but not quite the same as sticking plastic on spruce. Yeah, I know several 70s Martins have come into my shop for repair that the pick guard has basically fallen off and it has cracked or warped the top underneath it. So yeah, a lot of times you pull them off and the there's a big depression underneath where it was sitting at too. Right, right. Yeah, I don't care about the pick guard destroying itself. It's the fact that it <laughs> yeah. destroys the underlying yeah. uh, wood that is what really kills the value of the instrument. So this is stuck down with a piece of uh, Stu Maxell's a 3M sheet of double-sided adhesive that you stick the wood to, trace it out with a razor knife, and then peel the other side off and stick it into place. So Okay, great. And it's removable, a little bit of heat with a hot air, uh, the, uh, not hot air gun, but a hair dryer. I wouldn't go to a hot air gun on the, the top of the guitar, but a hair dryer should loosen it enough to remove it. A little, it. little more gentle. Yep. Yeah. So you had mentioned that you did a lot of this or all of this with CNC, correct? Yes, that is 100% cut on CNC. So can you describe a little bit, because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering or thinking about CNC themselves, in fact, I'm one of those people, what the learning curve is like, the investment is like, just what it's like sort of switching gears into something like that. Not that you give up on the other the other yeah. tooling, but the integration of it into your existing CNC, shop. CNC, the machine itself, all said and done, the machine that's in my shop, I have had it for about three years. So I bought the CNC uh, right around at the time. It's a two foot by four foot machine uh, called a Zenbot. Uh, not a sponsor, but they make a pretty good machine. And right around 3,500 to 4,000 investment in the machine itself with the computer to run it and the control box and everything like that, uh, plus the router. Um, uses a standard router. You can get it for the wall. Hitachi or Bosch router base. So that runs the actual machine and then you need a system to do your CAD work. I use a Mac system and I run Fusion 360 which is a very powerful 3D modeling system. Its power goes way beyond my skill level at this time. I'm pretty much sticking to a 2D, two-dimensional type cuts to where I do outlines or I do truss rod slots, things like that. And it had a learning curve to where before I cut anything out, I think I spent about a full solid week learning how to even draw to make like a 
pattern for a fretboard. Not the fretboard, but the outline of the fretboard. Right. So, so kind of like the simplest yeah. shape you can yeah. do. And I like to pride myself on everything being hand built. So 90% of the work on this guitar is still handmade. I use the CNC to make my templates just so I can get the precision that I want. So I make the template for the fretboard. This is a great example, I think. The fretboard, I draw the line, the width of the nut. I draw the width of the bridge. I add the, the spacing along the sides and the length of it. And then I make that trapezoid shaped template. Intuitively, you can go on to Fusion 360 that says, oh, I want binding. You can grab those two outside lines of the edge of the fretboard and move them in however thick you want your binding and recut it, that template, to be able to use on your router to get the exact width you want. So I knew I needed 95 thousandths for the binding and purfling, and I just shrunk the template down by 95 thousandths, and then it makes a perfectly straight cut that way. It's really increased the accuracy as far as I'm concerned in, in my building. I still make the template, I still cut the fretboard out on the bandsaw, take it to the router, but the templates are now adjusted perfectly to what I'm looking for. We were talking a little bit about this before we turned on the camera and everything. You were saying how also, when, if you're first getting into CNC, if that's a route you wanna take, that you can literally just learn this software and use it to design. Mm -hmm and purely to design, to design templates, to design headstock shapes, new bridge shapes and things yeah. like that, and just print those out. Then, you know, build your yeah. templates the old fashioned way. That way you're kind of dipping your toes into the water. You're not putting thousands of dollars into a CNC machine and all of yeah. that stuff and having to learn the, the little nitpicky yeah. aspects of controlling it. You're literally just learning the software. Yeah. And then if you want to take the plunge later, you can yeah. do that. Yeah, Fusion 360 is actually free to the amateur user. It's only after you start earning so much money a year using their software that you actually have to pay for it. But when you pay for it, it unlocks different features as far as the actual CNC portion of it go. But the drawing software is 100% uh, yeah. ready to use. Um, so it, it's, it's a great skill to learn. And there are, Skillshare has a ton of videos on it if somebody uses Skillshare should sponsor you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so should Fusion 360. Fusion at 360 point. at this point. You already mentioned yeah. it, but I should mention it again. We're, you know, yeah. we're, we're, it's it's be becoming an ad for Fusion 360. Yeah. But um, There are other software programs out there. Fusion 360 might actually be a little too advanced for the template making, but when you start getting into, eventually I'd like to get into where I can actually rough carve my necks with it. I want to be able to slot and radius a huge fingerboards. time saver yeah. for, so, for a lot of people. So that could be something. And then you're getting consistent necks. Every neck is going to be, you know, the same size as the last. And you can change it. You can make a C shape, a D shape, right. thicker, thinner, however. Yeah, a lot of people, do. when they hear consistency, they, they would immediately think like, oh, well, you know, I want to be able to put that sort of magical personalized touch into my neck shape so that it matches every user. You can honestly still do that. You just design it into the software. It just yeah. means that you can, can replicate it again if you have, yeah. if you want to make that same thing for someone else because they have the same concern as the other person. Exactly. So yeah, I don't think it's a, uh, you know, us against them kind of thing <laughs> with, with CNC. We don't have to, you know, fight, fight the technology, even though I should say, I don't, you, I don't have CNC myself, but only because um, of inertia. Well, you know, when yeah. you're moving in one given direction, you've been doing something for a long time, it's a big deal to switch to something, to learn a completely different way of doing yeah. things. One other thing that was done on the CNC, and in the forum, I think everybody saw the pictures of this, but this is the sound port that I designed with the CNC. Uh, my company logo is a compass rose, so this is an approximation of a compass rose. I was able to cut this ebony piece out completely on the CNC, and then I made a reverse template of the oval and was able to attach that to the guitar firmly and then router out that oval and the s joint is completely seamless there and you can't get that accuracy of that type without something like that there you'd always have little gaps that you're going to come back through fill it with a little bit of glue a little bit of whatever that is one of the things that that i really that 
the first time I've done anything like that on a CNC. So perfectly seamless, so you can you know see the type of precision you get with that. Yeah, it's a cool idea too. I like the size of the sound port as well. It's not very large, so yeah. you're not losing a lot from your main sound hole there. That size actually, I think, makes it a little bit louder because I've noticed if I plug it, it actually seems like you lose a little bit of your projection. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and play this thing. Okay. Pick. So this is a dread. I think we mentioned that earlier. This is a dreadnought, which means uh, characteristically they're like bassy and boomy. And you definitely get this sounds like a dreadnought to me. I haven't played a dread admittedly I haven't played a dreadnought in a really long time so I was saying to him earlier on that it's a little difficult for me because I've purely been building OMs triple O's and now the parlors for quite a while now and uh, I don't visit music stores anymore <laughs> it's been so long since I've been in one so in my mind I'm always comparing it to an OM and I have to think outside that paradigm. I think OM, you think more, or uh, Dreadnought, you probably think more of a, of a bluegrass style player. Oh, for sure. Um, uh, country players, a lot of OM, or of uh, that size. Uh, they're dreadnought size guitars, so it's a little, little bit of a, a definitely a bassier, heavier, yep, lower heavier in the bass. Uh, projects really well, and this does both of those things. I can, by the way, I can hear the projection, and um, yes, I, I can't really do it myself because I don't really play blue, bluegrass, but it's you know, hard flat picking essentially is is what this guitar was designed for technically it was designed to be heard over fiddle players like you're at your you're out in the parking lot at a bluegrass jam you know sitting on the tailgate of your truck one guy's as a fiddle someone has a banjo and you've got this wimpy orchestra model guitar and nobody can hear you <laughs> so they made the dreadnought Well, thanks for tuning in again. We're going to go grab lunch, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye thanks. for now. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.